everyone and welcome back to my channel thank you guys for being back if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much if you are new please don't forget to subscribe also like comment share the videos turn on your bell so you know when i post a new video so for the next couple of weeks i'll be focusing on some of the spree killers that we've had in south africa um so basically a spree killer is somebody who kills multiple people in different location but in a there's no resting period so it's a it's, it's a short period of time um yeah so i hope you guys will enjoy this little series of speculars that i'll be doing and yeah i hope you enjoy this video and let's get into it so yeah so the first person that i'll be focusing on is bulelani bukwana who was a 29 year old at the time of his offense um he was a security guard he had been a security guard for about three to four years um at a company called Gray Security Services and he was actually supposed to turn up for duty for overnight duty um, on the night that he committed his offense and he actually didn't show up and on him he had a 9 millimeter pistol and so he killed 11 people he injured six people um, and he eventually committed suicide and all this happened in one night and all of this happened in Mdantani which is a township near East London. And this was on the 9th of February, 2002. So why did Bulelani kill 11 people and injure six people and eventually kill himself? He did all this because his girlfriend broke up with him. His girlfriend didn't want to speak to him. His girlfriend didn't want to see him. His girlfriend or ex-girlfriend they don't want anything to do with him. So, Bulelani gets angry at the fact that the girlfriend doesn't want to talk to him, doesn't want to hear him out. So, I think he went to the girlfriend's house, but then the girlfriend didn't want to speak to him. So, he left the girlfriend's house where there was actually a family function. So, there was a lot of people there. It was empty, you know? So, anyway, he leaves the girlfriend's house. He goes to a nearby Shabin. When he gets there, as the owner of the Shabin opens the door for him, he shoots her in the butt, wounding him, obviously. After shooting her, he goes to the back of the bar where he kills a man. Um, and then he leaves the Shabin. So he injured one person, killed one person. And then he leaves the Shabin. Um, he goes back to the girlfriend's house. And so at this point, one of the girlfriend's friends persuade her to talk to him you know give him 10 minutes of your time hear what he has to say you know maybe he'll leave you alone if you talk to him um so as the girlfriend is opening the door you know to go hear him out or whatever he actually shoots her in the head killing her instantly um so at this point there's commotion obviously like somebody has just been shot what is going on so there's two accounts of how the dad the father of the girlfriend got killed but this is the account that makes the most sense to me right so after bulelani kills the girlfriend um the dad comes to see what all this commotion about as he's coming to see what the commotion is about bulelani shoots him and there's another man who gets shot so it's the dad another man and the girlfriend who have been shot in that small amount of time so after that he so everybody's now scared um the family locks themselves in the house because he literally just killed three people like out of nowhere and so he goes to the neighbor's house when he gets to the neighbor's house they have a fight it's a woman and the woman is strong enough to like fight him off because he actually hit her with the pistol in the head but the woman fights back and um bulelani doesn't actually um kill her um so because he failed to shoot her he actually walks out and goes away so now he failed to kill the neighbor so he's back in the streets so he figures okay let me hijack someone you know to get a car he hijacks a golf that was passing by and he actually pulls out the gun on the occupants of the car of yeah of the car and he actually takes the golf and drives back to the shabin where he left where he shot the owner in the butt and left another man dead 
he drives back to the Shibin. As he's getting there, there's a couple that's arriving at the same time as him. And apparently that couple was there to help, you know, because there's a, a situation at the Shibin. So they're there to help out. And he actually shoots the man in the car. It was the Isuzu. He shoots the man in the neck, killing him instantly. And then he promises not to kill the woman if the woman will help him out. Because he believes that in that Shibin, there's somebody who was interfering with his relationship. And I guess he wants to he wants to deal with them quick fast, you know? So fine. Um they go and knock at the shipping and nobody opens because I mean I guess they're scared, you know, it's understandable. Nobody opens, so it's like cool. They go back into the Isuzu, he drags the man out of his car, the man that he just killed, he drags him out of the car, he demands the man's gun and the man's cell phone. And apparently the woman now gets in the into the car with Bulelani into the Isuzu and they drive to Mahadeva Shibin, which is 50 meters away from the girlfriend's house. 50 meters away from the place where he now left three people dead. When he gets there, um he kills one man, he injures another man, and then he starts randomly shooting. Randomly shooting at pedestrians, randomly shooting at cars that are passing by, he starts randomly shooting and he actually kills one driver of the car and two passengers of a different car. So he left chaos, like it was rampant. Can you imagine the panic that was going on when you just hear a gun? Like. I can only imagine. I feel like it's it instills fear. And I feel like the people who live there probably were so scared for such a long time to even be in public because nobody wants to experience something like that. And also they had probably never experienced it before. So at this point, somebody has called the police because wow, what is he? So the police spot him and they pursue him. He shoots back at the police and he sees that he's not winning and he actually you know because he probably lived there so he knows all the corners he runs in like in between the houses you know he's trying to hide from the police and he's attempting to escape but at around 10 p.m he realizes that no man i'm not gonna win you know there's a lot of them there's one me and might i just add the first killing or the first at the time that he went to the shabi at the time when he first shot the, the owner of the Shibin, it was only half past eight. It's now 10 p.m. when he's realizing that he's not gonna win this game. That's one and a half hours, guys. One and a half hours where he killed 11 people and injured six people. That's a spree kill. That's like a lot of people killed in one and a half hours. But anyway, so anyway, he shoots himself in the head um, because he realizes that he's not gonna win and he probably doesn't wanna deal with like the repercussions, you know. He probably didn't think it through in the first place. So they found the gun that he used, um, that he stole from the Isuzu or he took from the Isuzu, but they didn't find the gun that he was using initially, like the 9mm pistol, they didn't find that gun. The spokesperson from the security company that he worked at says that they don't issue their security guards with, with guns like so he probably stole it from the job or they don't know where he found it so there was another car that was in question where there was blood splatters but then there was no occupant so there was um they suspected that whoever was in that car was probably shot by bulelani but then they probably managed to run away or something like that so that is the spree killing of Bulelani Mukwana um, from the early 2000s. Um, yeah, it's like I said, 11 people, 6 people injured in one and a half hours. That's a lot. And you can just imagine the state of mind that he was in, um, how angry, and the fact that all this transpired from a relationship breakup. Now 11 innocent people and 6 other innocent people are in are either dead or injured because your girlfriend broke up with you. 
So, yeah, I was saying his state of mind, he was probably angry at one person for that. And it just it just goes to show that like how dependent was he on the girlfriend? You know, how dependent was he emotionally on his girlfriend that he broke he broke to the point where he would kill strangers even. Like how angry do you get? So the 11 victims of Bulelani are Noluvuyo Mbenya, who is the girlfriend, Mark Anjana Mbenya, who is the dad of the girlfriend, Siseko Skade, Tami Jali, Madoda Magwedinana, Selyami Matthews, Zingisa Stemele, Lulamile Panti, which is the man who was driving the Isuzu, the man who got shot in the neck, Luyanda Zidumbu, Kwanele Matroko and Mawetu Mkala who actually died at the hospital. Okay, so the survivors were actually taken to Cecilia Makawane Hospital and the survivors are Lindy Wentoni who is the neighbor, um, Nozukile Mengu, Dombizanele Ntweni, Fuzile Konono, Nosisi Skweyia who is the owner of the Shebin, um, Mfundo Moy who was only a um, 18 years at, at the time and he was actually left paralyzed after the whole incident like from the waist down um, and Mlandiseli Nazo um, who actually fractured his ankle while he was fleeing away from Bukwana so it's like an innocent person just walking down the street and next thing you know somebody shooting randomly um, your, your life is literally hanging in the balance because like randomly so like you know what i mean it's a very scary thing um for like society to know that somebody can just rock up and shoot randomly shooting because they have issues at home or they were fired at work or for whatever reason and i think maybe it's just me because i'm a very paranoid person but i always think like when i'm in like out and about like the person next to me are they okay you know are they gonna do something random are they suicidal you know are they gonna wanna bomb all of us um you know what i mean i literally do think like that um but i think it's just my paranoia but it's a real paranoia to have because these things really do happen they might not happen often you might not know a whole lot about them but they do happen um there's no way you can be careful you know you cannot overthink your life to the extent but it's really it's a scary reality so i hope you guys enjoyed this video um i'll be back next week with another one don't forget to like comment subscribe share the video um so yeah let me guys let me know what you guys think of this whole case what you think of spree killings spree killers in general um and yeah i'll check you guys next week